to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as I ask for a moment of silence for past fu volunteer firefighter Sean Cunningham. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Roll. Alderman Tobin. Here. Alderman Jean-Francois. Here. Alderman Johnson. Here. Alderman Alderman Ray. <laughs> Alderman Kleiner. Here. Alderman Green. Here. Alderman Witt. Here. Alderman Massey. Here. President Rodriguez. Here. Formals present. Approval of minutes. February 21st and March 7th. So moved. Motion by Alderman Massey for both minutes. Second, Second by Alderman Witt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, for the good of the city, we have an audit report presentation. Hi, I'm Donna Crowley with RBT. So I'm here to present your December 31st, 2021 audited financial statements. Um, I'm going to just refer to, at first, the auditor's report, which gives a clean opinion and that is what you want. So all is good. I'm going to just do a few comparisons from prior year. Your net position has um, increased by about $10 million, which is a good thing. That is due to your increase in revenue and decrease in expenses, so perfect. Um, on the fund level, oh, actually, no, that's fine. On the fund level, your total fund balances in the funds, which is how you're used to seeing things, is about $17 million. Um, you had either slight de decreases or increases in most of the funds except water and sewer, they had some, uh, some decre uh, bigger decreases. And just really one last thing, I'm going to skip all the way to the back of the report to the single audit. Um, we just had a couple of findings um, due to, and we had tested the ARPA money. So there was just a couple small findings in which the city has also already provided a corrective action plan for. And that is it, unless there's any questions. Two quick question. Just sure. 2021, why so late? Well, you had a few um, turnovers in management, which definitely prolonged things. Um, the first one, those people had done most of the work, and so the second set of people who came in really had to <clears throat> go through the 21 year reporting and provide everything for us and they had to you know see what they're see figure out things for themselves to provide us the information and then during the audit um the second set of management came on so you had another turnover so again that takes time okay <coughs> did you get all the information you need oh yes that's why we're final and we're right on for um it hasn't delayed 22 we're on to start in about a month. And when we can see the, that order report? We're hoping, since now we have the same people go in here, it should um, probably in the summer is usually uh, the usual <coughs> time frame. Okay. Does any member have any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the good of the city, anyone would like to address the council, please step forward. Okay. Remarks of the mayor? Online. No. I, I don't have much to report tonight, uh, except I'll be available for questions, but um, also to advise you, April 4th will be the state of the city as required um, under the charter. A little bit late, but I guess we're all late this year. <laughs> 2021 <laughs> late. <laughs> 
so uh, you start the meeting earlier then than the 730 I think that will be up to the council president not the first ward alderman it's up to the mayor if you want we can start at seven if mr. Johnson can get here at seven I'm staying out of it <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever the council president decides <laughs> I'll probably be speaking for close to an hour so if you're gonna say anything we'll, we'll, I'm gonna we'll say modify. that Joseph G Massey is, is a good man then I'll be here <laughs> any questions I'll do my best thank you Alden McCliner yes thank you um, I, Mayor, I wish uh, I wanted to ask if you could give us an update, number one, on the O&W. We had someone ask about that at the constituents meeting. And then also, I'm curious, on the psych center, okay. the transfer of the property from the All state. Right. Uh, first, O&W. O&W, we just received extensions on the original bids for the um, shoring and the abatement. Um, the reason for the, uh, for the extensions is we don't have all the money lined up yet. Um, the projections were with um, are complying with all of the SHPO requirements, which are part of the acceptance of the grants, the numerous grants that we're receiving, um, and along with other factors have driven up the cost. Um, you know, the post-COVID costs are uh, significantly higher than pre-COVID. So we're looking at other ways to raise funds. We form are in the process of forming a local development corporation that would make the ONW project eligible for state and federal historic tax credits, which will potentially inject another six to $7 million of cash into the project. And we're also, uh, Maria's office examining, and with Caitlin uh, McNamara, the, the new market tax credits. So we're looking to put together as much cash as we can going into the project. Um, and uh, I know Head Start is going to be relocating this year just on a temporary basis so we all want to get in there but we don't want to start the project and not have enough cash to finish the project so that's why the purpose of forming the LDC and looking at other sources of funds uh, we also have a uh, another request in for restore New York that was um, which is a um, historic grant restoration program through New York State and I'm not sure when we'll be hearing one way or the other on that so that's the status of O&W. The, um, the psych center is in its, probably its uh, uh, 15th role with, um, uh, with New York State telling us it's only 60 days away. Um, we uh, have once again forwarded all the information for probably the 10th time uh, to them. And uh, it just gets bounced around. My understanding is after Alex uh, Smith, our corporation counsel, finally became a nudge, as he uses the term, um, that <laughs> appears that they do have the information that's necessary to identify or to forward to each of the agencies that are required to sign off on the transfer. And then we are developing our plan for what properties we're going to renovate for fire police what properties are going to go to the college, um, the big ones being Kleiner and, and Tuckerman, which properties we're going to look to develop uh, through maybe a local development corporation or through the private sector, and we're developing that plan. Keep a note on the old nurses' quarters. Um, I think it was the nurses' quarters, the Tudor building that, that had the fire in the back. Yeah. FATN did receive a $1.2 million state grant um, to renovate that as dormitories for the college. The college is projecting 2,000 students within the next uh, five years. And that was a positive move because it's a, the first injection of state funds into, into this project up there. So uh, we know it's going to happen. We're just don't, not sure when it's going to happen. Um, but we've been very forceful with them of late because of the constant break-ins into the vacant buildings. Mm. And we're concerned about having another major disaster up there. So that's where we're at with both projects. Thank you. You're welcome. I had one other question regarding that. Is it, are you aware that they're using one of those buildings to house some of the Northern Academy students as like a dorm? Am I aware that they're doing it that, now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they had a planning board approval for dormitory on, I think it was in some of the housing though, the, yeah. the, the houses towards the Monhagen Avenue side. 
they're allowed under the zoning code for um, student and staff related to the college. Um, and I think one or two of the houses do have student dorms. But the, the Tudor building in the back, uh, Tudor brick building, whatever it's, whatever it's called, will be housing a lot more than that. I believe they told us probably approaching 200 students. And college we're ready to- College or Northern Academy? College. College. And uh, th they are ready to move now, but they have to wait until they get that state um, grant number before they can start the work. Understood, thank so you. So that will be happening this, this summer. Any other questions? Thank you, Mayor. What time are we starting on April 4th, so I know? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, thank you. We're gonna start <clears throat> early. Economic development. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Today we had our IDA meeting and we also had the audit presentation. The IDA came out with a clean audit and uh, so we're moving forward to uh, send the audit and the Paris report, just similar to what we do for the CDA because it's a public authorities um, to, to the New York State. So um, that occurred today. We had a great concert uh, at the Paramount this past weekend, Herman's Hermits with Peter Noon, approached close to 700 folks at the Paramount. It was an awesome show. So we have a new show announcement Asia is coming to the Paramount in August, and that's going to be part of the Rock, Roll, and Run with the Run for Downtown weekend. So we're partnering up with them for promotions and, and stuff like that. So coming up, we have the orchestra featuring former members of ELO. We have a Steely Dan tribute group coming. We have Debbie Gibson. We have Asia, and then we have, in the fall, some oldie shows, uh, Shadows of the 60s, Motown, and then we're booking some more right now. And don't forget, we have movies as well, middletownparamount.com. Also, another ribbon cutting this week at 100 North Street, this Friday, 3.30, MCM Beauty, Sla uh, Beauty Supplies. So join us on uh, Friday, 3.30, at 100 North Street. And that's all I have for this evening. Any questions for Maria? Thank you, Maria. <coughs> DBW Commissioner. Saw some hot ass care to share. <laughs> what is it? You care to share the humor? <laughs> Where should I look? Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, rather. Uh, so, um, to start off, Alderman Massey, the reservoirs are at 96% uh, full. And we have plenty of water, and obviously, we're going to start lowering the water level a little bit at the uh, Shuangang Reservoir for the work to take place. The contractor, um, a Silver Dome is doing a great job, uh, very professional, and uh, they're working with our guys. We help them with our equipment so that minimize any change orders in the future in cleaning. We use our vac truck uh, as an example to uh, clean the gatehouse and so on, and they got divers. Uh, they're, they're really top-notch so far uh, contractors. We're very happy with their performance, and the project is moving along. We had a pre-construction meeting for the Kinch Reservoir, with the other contractor, and hopefully things will move, move, will move along uh, um, well uh, with the other contractor at Kench. He's uh, mobilizing to start on uh, April 14th. Um, plumbing. Uh, everybody complains about there is a minimal amount, number of uh, plumbers in here. As the mayor knows, uh, we have a test coming on um, April 14th. The deadline to register for this test is March 31st. We already, I believe, we have six candidates that they've been reviewed, their credentials reviewed and accepted to sit for the test. So anybody else who's interested, you know, here we are. So we're not trying to keep the number of plumbers to minimum. We're, we're opening it up to qualified uh, plumbers. So hopefully they will pass the test and we'll have more licensed plumbers. Um, Yard waste, it's going to start April 3rd, so uh, you, you can't deposit the leaves in the street. Please, everything has to be in a container. If you have branches in there, they'll have to be wrapped with the string so we can pick them up. And uh, it's all in our code, and it's going to be advertised on our website, and we'll send an Excel as well with the link. 
to that uh, hand out to tell you the specific, remind people of the specifics, how the yard waste uh, should be uh, deposited for DPW to come and pick it up. So that would be Monday, April 3rd, we'll start. Um, we're flushing, we started flushing uh, the water distribution system. We're doing the second and third ward. Uh, so again, expect low pressure or sometimes no water while we are doing the flushing in the immediate vicinity of your property. Uh, and um, be on the lookout for discolored water for 48 hours after, after we, we, we finish flushing in your neighborhood. Um, if you're working, you come home, you see by the fire hydrant water has been all over the street. It means we've, we've done that area. Um, so uh, just be on the lookout so that the laundry will not be uh, discolored when you do it. Right, yeah, be, be on the lookout for uh, this colored water, please, when you do the laundry. Um, allow 48 hours before, before, uh, before, you, f before you use uh, the water for uh, laundry. Um, recycling, again, I don't want to just keep repeating it. I want to start the recycling by thanking Alderman Green because uh, he was able to translate our uh, handout that we use from the county to uh, Spanish and he's going to try to do it in, in uh, Chinese as well. So that will be, uh, that's going to be immediately be mailed out with all our literature, whether it is in the water bill, whether it is, it's going to be on our website. Uh, it's going to be going in every rental permit that we send out and um, on the website and, and, and so on. All our social media is going to be on channel 20. So we'll, we'll publicize that as much as possible. And we continue. A lot of people are very upset. They call us, they're very upset about the letter they received, mm. uh, that their recycling is not picked up, and this is your final warning. So we explain to them all it takes just a couple of cans of, from people who are not complying with the recycling ordinance, and then the whole truck will be rejected. So everybody in their, that whole neighborhood, in their more than neighborhood, most of the world that has been recycling and being very careful about what to recycle, their entire effort will be wasted because a couple of garbage bags that were found in a big uh, yard, uh, in a big, I'm sorry, in a big truck, which is a compactor. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not only reflecting on you, it's reflecting on everybody who's trying to recycle and do the right thing. And I know everybody's trying to do the right thing, it's just you have to be extra careful about what to put in your recycling can and what not to put in there. So we go pick it up again, you know, we take pictures, we document everything, and we go the following week, we pick it up as garbage, your recyclables that were rejected on Sunday. But very soon, we got code enforcement is gonna start going and they're gonna be issuing a uh, notice of violation and courts and all that stuff. We don't wanna do that. We don't want to do that, but, you know, that's we're, we're trying our best to send the message out and so far, no violations were sent out, just letters of warning. So please work with us. We appreciate that very much. Um, the water department, uh, they continue while they're flushing and doing everything else and helping with the dam project. Uh, they're really doing a very impressive job. On, um, on March 29th, uh, we, they were working like almost 24 hours to replace major high pressure 20, uh, 20 inch old valve. Um, that was done, we wanted to, inter why is it 24 hours? Because they had to prepare the ditch and prepare, uh, find out everything that we need to do and then cut the water off so that our residents will be least amount, le uh, least convenient by our uh, replacement uh, of this 20 inch valve. And I wanna thank uh, Council President Rodriguez because he stopped there at night while we're working and uh, the men appreciate him being there and, you know, just, uh, you know, keep the spirit up in there after working 24 hours. After that, they went to sleep Friday morning because the water pressure was restored 7.30 in the morning. They cleaned up. They went to sleep a couple of hours. Some of them came back to plow um, or they're ready to come back to plow to help the street department in, in their plowing operation because the street department by itself cannot do uh, the plowing uh, of the entire city when we have uh, a good size uh, storm. So we appreciate the council president again coming out and being with us for a little bit. And I want to I want to mention you know um, Brian Smith. He's the deputy commissioner. Scott Mills. He's the uh, 
foreman, Bob, Ed, and Taylor. They are really have done a magnificent job. I mean, jumping and getting the job done. It's very difficult work. And uh, as uh, the council president saw, um, uh, the 20-inch pipe, every time we open up, because it's very old infrastructure, it goes back to the early 1900, every time we open up the ground, we find something new. The actual 20-inch water main, as the council president saw in his own eyes, was curved. I've never seen anything like this in my life. So the guys, they had to be very careful how to cut the pipe, how to cut the old valve out very close to the valve, remove it so we can put the dresser coupling in there. So. We, you know, it was quite an involved operation just because of what we found in the field. The actual pipe is curved. I've never seen anything like this. But that's, um, so I'm very, very, very happy with the guys and their performance, and they're not complaining, and they just keep going. We appreciate that very much of them. Uh, before you tonight, <clears throat> there is a, a request to award the contract for, um, for uh, repainting and upgrading the Highland Avenue water storage tank. Uh, to comply with the current requirements and also repainting it. Uh, some people, you know, if you want to take a drive over Highland Avenue, just outside the city, Highland Avenue extension, you will see how poor the condition of the tank is. So it's really time for it, and we appreciate your support for, uh, for approving this project. And uh, we have about a $3 million grant, under, just under $3 million gr uh, grant from EFC for this project. Any questions for me? Any questions for Jacob? Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. <clears throat> City Treasurer. Good evening, everyone. I um, have a resolution before you in regards to transferring uh, our year-end overdrafts. I just wanted to address it briefly. Uh, it is part of closing out uh, the 2022 year. We have to, based on our way of accounting for expenses and revenue, do what's called modify accrual accounting, um, placing the expenses in the right year, the revenue in the right year, and then as part of our process, we have to balance out the budget according to its expenses. So I just wanted to clarify that. You have any questions? Any questions? Alderman Massey? I don't have a question, but I want to congratulate you on the auditor's report. Thank you for the good job. Thank you. Anyone else? The 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. If the comers come in, maybe. Huh? If the comers come in, maybe they want to address the council. You guys want to address the council? We, we thought this was about the parking issues. I guess we are a little confused. That's later. On us later. Public hearing. We have a public hearing? Yeah, we have a public hearing. Next. Thanks, Mayor, for police chief. Good evening. Uh, a few items for you this evening. Um, as I uh, emailed the council today, uh, we did have a shooting or shots fired last night that we're investigating on Prospect Avenue. Um, there's not much more than I put out in the press release today. Uh, there's not really too much I can give you. Uh, as of right now, we do not have a victim that's coming forward, very similar to our previous events. Um, so it makes it that much more difficult, just as we've been experiencing in the past. Uh, overnight parking uh, it ended on March 15th. However, if we do have winter precipitation, the law is still that the cars have to be off the road for the night for DPW, or at any time for DPW. Uh, Lieutenant Sam Khalil retired from the department on March 17th after serving just about 24 years of service. So I just want to recognize him. We did a walkout celebration for him this past Friday. And uh, you know he's one of the people that will probably go down in the history of the Middletown Police Department as being extremely well known throughout the community. So um, I thank him for his service and I wish him the best. Um, Lieutenant Eric Hargett uh, just graduated on March 16th from the 285th FBI National Academy in Quantico, Virginia. He spent the last 10 weeks in Quantico um, doing his studies. It's an amazing program. It's an honor to go to this program. He has joined the ranks of 1% of law enforcement worldwide to have this opportunity. So he's, uh, he'll be back in the office tomorrow. And we look forward to having him back with his newfound knowledge and uh, look forward to uh, the many years that he'll serve with that uh, experience. Other than that, I have nothing unless you have questions for me. Any questions from the police chief? Thank you, Chief. Superintendent of Recreation. Uh, 
Uh, good evening. I have nothing to report. Any questions? Sweet. Nope. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. City Clerk. Good evening, everybody. I just wanted to remind the community and the council that tomorrow the uh, Mayor's Youth Council will be hosting a blood drive at Mulberry House uh, beginning at 2 o'clock, going until 6.30. <coughs> we'll be taking walk-ins. Um, if you are so inclined, please stop by. Uh, the blood banks are low this time of year. We could certainly use your help. Uh, spring cleanup, the annual citywide cleanup day is on April 22nd. Uh, due to the overwhelming uh, response last year, we are moving the event starting point from Degnan Square down to the Erie Way uh, Park. Uh, that's at 1-31 Union Street here in Middletown. Uh, you can sign up through our website on Sign Up Genius. Uh, you can pick a location in the city that is near and dear to you, or you can come out that morning and we'll assign you a spot. Gloves and equipment will be provided by the city. Uh, we thank the, D the Department of Public Works for their support. Uh, and uh, as part of the dis my city clerk's uh, efforts to go paperless, we have launched our online FOIL uh, portal. Uh, FOIL requests now are all digitized. Uh, you can uh, request your information digitally, uh, receive response digitally through email. Uh, no more need to come into the office and drop off paper or get paper handed to you. Um, it's going to increase a lot of our transparency. Uh, it'll save folks in the community some money because state law requires us to provide documents electronically at no charge to our, our citizens. So check it out. It's on our website, uh, middletown-ny.com, on the right-hand side, FOIL requests. That's it. Any questions for the city clerk? All right. Public hearings and grievances. Good evening. Notice is hereby given that the city of Middletown will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, March 21st, 2023, on or as near as 7.30 p.m. as possible in the Common Council Chambers, second floor at 16 James Street, to hear any and all persons wishing to be heard on proposed changes to the city's parking regulations. Any and all persons wishing to be heard will, give it, will be given an opportunity to speak either for or against the proposed changes to the parking regulations. The proposed parking regulations are available in the Office of the Common Council Clerk, City Hall at 16 James Street, and on our website. Any person unable to participate at the time of the public hearing can email comments submitted in advance to rmccormick at middletown-ny.com by order of the Common Council. Okay, at this time the public hearing is now open. Come up. <laughs> <coughs> Good evening. I'm William Gonzalez from Olivia del Panadas. Um, I actually was invited up here by numerous people. I'm surprised they're not here. So I guess I'm. You know. <laughs> they set you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they set me up. <laughs> but we, with these parking uh, rules, it has impeded our business. It, a lot of my customers are refusing even to get into the restaurant. We're having to bring out the food because they get nervous with this guy giving out tickets. My staff right, is having to go out every two or three hours, check on their cars, and finding tickets on their cars. The, one of the main guys across the street, the pizza shop, the delivery guys, they, they're getting tickets left and right. Now, we tried talking to the parking guy he gives us information and then turns around, it turns out to be <coughs> false information. We in and out, I got a little small restaurant. I got no storage. We either go into Sam's Club, uh, Restaurant Depot, we come back, we do our thing, right? He sees us getting in our car, leaving, and he tells me, you could come back to the parking lot, just try not to park in the same spot. I come back and find other spaces, right? He still writes me a ticket. And it's been three tickets in a row. And he knows who I am. I mean, we in and out all day long. And he's still writing tickets. Um, thankfully that we are able to fight a few of them. But this takes time from us. It's time consuming. It's costing my business. My tenant upstairs, I had a nurse that used to start work, used to get home at 4 o'clock in the morning, right? They asked her to park at the 72-hour parking lot. This is a 23, 24 year old young girl walking from that parking lot at four o'clock in the morning, have, have to get up at seven o'clock in the morning again to go move her car. I offered to pay for her parking permit so I would not lose her. Right in the process, she got angry, for lack of a better word, and she moved. She moved, she just left. Most, this, this new rules, are benefiting outsiders. But the people that live in the town, the people that pay taxes in the town, are 
frustrated and and I'm really surprised that they're not here right now because it's way too much for us. I don't live in the city, but I'm spending more time in parking than anything else. If there's anything else, like maybe issuing um, business owners one ticket or one permit, just one single permit, my, my wife, the cook, my business depends on her. And by nine o'clock in the morning, she starts sweating, not because it's hot in that kitchen, because she knows she has to go move that car. She has to go move that car. And then when she moves it three hours later, she, has, she starts sweating again, because she knows she has to move that car. Now, walking three blocks at nine, 10 o'clock at night, today we closed the restaurant so we could be here, but we should usually get out nine, 10 o'clock at nighttime, walking to the 72 hour parking. The light is not that great. Um, it's scary. Being a business owner, people might think that I'm, you know, I have money in my pocket. All I got is holes in my pocket. <laughs> so imagine me walking at nine o'clock at night, people thinking I'm scared. So imagine sending my daughter here because she stays with us at the same time. Nine o'clock at night time, we have to walk all the way to that parking lot because we can't park. And then you, if you go out there right now, that parking lot is empty. It's completely empty. You look at your streets, they're completely empty. On Thursdays, Fridays, you get a little bit of a crowd, the outsiders. By the town people, they come in, they rush in, they want to take their order and rush right back out because they want to avoid that ticket. I have no more comments and thank you for listening. The 72 hour lot you're talking about is the Paramount lot? Oh, yeah. Well, further down. They, further down. Further down. <clears throat> not, the the, param not in front of the Paramount. Not, not in front of, not. Usually in front of the Paramount is f when the Paramount is open and we st I think it's four hours also. Okay. 72 hours is further down the street. I think that's South Street straight down. Right. And, or go all the way close to the other 72 hours is... Canal Street. By the bus station. Close to the bus station. Right behind City Hall. I'd like to respond to him because uh -huh. um, I, I don't know what you're, the people who oppose the parking regulations really are thinking. The parking regulations are there for your customers, not for your employees, and not for the, prop, not for the business owners to park in front of their own business. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you won't have any business. And you're, you're, if customers are afraid, they're, they're not in your restaurant for more than three hours, three and a half, four hours. So why would your customers be afraid to park legally to go into your restaurant? Uh, unless, well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask. So, um, so if they're parking illegally, then in front of a fire hydrant or in, front of, in a loading zone, then that'll make a difference. But you could understand if we gave permits out to every apartment and to every business owner, you have no customers. Every restaurant, Every business here has no customers. So there has to be a parking management plan. What we've recommended to people, I'm sure there's more than one person working at night with you when you close at nine o'clock, is when you slow down, and we told this to one of the restaurant owners also, is let that person go to the, pick up the car, and then move it closer to the restaurant. Because you're not gonna be there till midnight. So at seven, 7.30, move your car then. But the idea is not to um, continually move your car every three hours because you're violating the basic, they can still give you a ticket for that, if, especially if it's in the same lot. But we can't accommodate, based on the limited parking that we have, businesses, tenants, and customers. So I don't see how a business survives. And I've been... My family's been down here in business for since 1998 in downtown. And before that, we were in a neighborhood with very limited parking. And we didn't allow our, our customers, or I mean, our, our um, employees to park by our business because that parking spot is taking up a customer spot. So it's, it's a matter of planning how you're parking. Uh, right, by, right back here behind City Hall, 72-hour parking. Um, not far from your restaurant, right on Canal Street is long-term parking. And I understand having someone, um, uh, a, a young young person or, or um, I don't want to assign sexist, but a, a female walking later at night 
Um, it's, it could be anywhere. Your, your parking could be a little concerning in any community. But, and, and that's why you, you have to plan it where you can then move your car when the parking um, um, becomes, becomes open or a couple hours before you're ready to leave. But um, what, what do you think would happen to your business if there was no parking at all? Go ahead. Go ahead. So um, most of our customers are um, people that live in the area, people that walk to our business. Um, I find that the most regulars I see are people that live right there, and that's where their concerns are. A, B, in addition to that, a lot of tickets are given, I feel like, before the three-hour mark, so I don't, I don't know what that's about. But also, I, I myself will be moving to downtown Middletown, and safety is a big concern. Like, yeah, customers, but if I'm not safe, like, I've personally been harassed on the street. I've been followed in downtown Middletown, so if I'm parking very far from where my apartment is, that's, like, one of my concerns. Um, and then with, like, the overnight parking pass, it's, it ends at 7 a.m., which doesn't make sense to no, me it because... it ends at 11 a.m. Okay, that was one of false information I was given, so that's fair to me, yeah. but I think I'm worried about safety, um... As well as I feel like it's maybe just not fair. I feel like maybe some of the closer lots to, and I don't have all the information, so I could be wrong about some of the lots, but there's some lots I feel like maybe provide overnight parking and not the one by Paramount, but the one that's closer, I think it's behind like next to Equilibrium, because that's a little closer versus doing the one down there where nobody lives down there. So I feel like it's why have that overnight parking when you could have this parking and just say, okay, maybe during the day when there's business, you know, parking four hours here, but tenants can move there car to these closer parking lots overnight. Um, so Maria, that am I not mistaken, but the lot next to them has overnight parking? Yes, yes it does. Yeah. yeah. The, the lot right next to your restaurant has overnight parking. Mm -hmm. So your tenant has to buy a $25 or $50 or whatever it is permit. Anna, what's the price? Because I think on the website... Or $10 a month it might be. Yeah. Or Rick, yeah, what is it, $10 a month? It's, a, it's $120 a year. And it's but they don't have to buy it all year if they don't want to. They prorate it down months, every so. month. Correct. So $10 a month, they can park overnight right next door to your restaurant. Mm -hmm. But they can't park at before right. 7 o'clock. It has to be after 7 o'clock. And they have to move their car by 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, so they don't have to walk over... They don't, you yeah. know, the, 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 this... So if... I'll give you an example. My wife's restaurant has 30 employees. If we gave out parking tech, or parking passes, well, well, you're going to say only give one or two to each business. Why should your business only get one or two when you have two employees or three employees and the business across the street that has 30 employees only get one or two? You see, the arguments can be made in every case. But what I'm saying is no, no. that... So they can hear you too. I, I myself, or my wife, had, we in and out all day long. We have a very small restaurant. We in yeah. and out all so you day long. You wouldn't get a ticket then, right? No, we do, but not we for three-hour parking. We do, but yeah. unless you're parking for more than three <laughs> hours, right, no. Chief? Correct. One of the issues that we're having in that parking lot. Chief, can you come up? Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd actually have to see your tickets to see what you're getting summons for and, mm -hmm. and see where you're parking because there is some confusion in the, especially in the backside of what is a legal spot and what is not a legal spot. I've met <coughs> some other business owners, but one of the main issues we're dealing with right now in that parking lot and, and like up the street a little bit is our delivery drivers, our people that are coming going, our DoorDash people. They're kind of coming in quick. There's not a parking spot, so they're stopping right in the middle of that parking lot, right mm -hmm. in the entry point. They get out, they run to the restaurant, grab their stuff. By the time they get back, they have a summons. But that's not a legitimate parking spot. Not yet. Um, so, again, without seeing your tickets, seeing where you're parking, I can't give you appropriate guidance. See, my, my issue with my tickets is I go out to Sam's Club, come back, park somewhere else in the same lot, and I get a ticket. And they claim that I've been there over three hours. I even shown... Receipts that you left. I was. Well, that's that's a police matter. That's not a policy matter. No. That's uh, it seems that someone. But what I'm asking, what I'm saying is that me, as a built business owner, I wouldn't want my business there. Be, I feel like I'm being harassed by this, and it's only this one guy. Right. It's only this one guy, and it's all the time, all the time. He sees us moving the car. Well, that would be a separate issue than the parking. So, because if you're getting tickets before three hours, uh, and you're, it, it's it's not a parking policy issue, it's a parking enforcement issue, and that the chief will have to address that, and you could speak with him because we wouldn't want to talk about em specific employees without having all the information. But I can assure you, I've been here when there was tumbleweed going down the street, mm -hmm. and you had a lot of parking, 
and but there was no customers. There was no businesses. Now you have Saturday night, you had 700 people at the Paramount Theater. You had every business downtown full with customers. And the reason is because those customers had a place to park. If all the tenants parked there and left their car there for days, what, what, do you, where, where does you, what does that do for you as a business person? Now, your, your daughter said that most of your customers walk there. So that sort of defeats the argument that your customers are getting, you're hurting your business. If it's, most of your customers are walking there, they're not getting tickets for walking there. Well, because they live in the area and they're, they're, their concern is, oh, where am I putting my car? They're getting tickets all the time. They're like, where am well, I so that's a, they can buy an overnight. You, 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 like I said, your, your, your tenants can get for $10 a month can get a parking pass to park right next door to your building from 7 o'clock at night to 11 o'clock in the morning. So and that's, that's the miscommunication because we are being told from 7 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the no, morning. No, it starts again at 7 in the morning. Four hours starts again at 7 in the morning. So the so you go to 11 o'clock in the morning. Because mm. mm. on um, the website, because that's where I've been getting my information yeah. from, it's some of the information wrong. So okay. I was like, oh. Well, it might be, a, we'll try to make it more, uh, we'll try to correct it a little bit okay. so it'll be easier to understand. But but if I would, you know, you're, you're, Add $10 a month into your rent, tenant's rent and give them a parking pass. Well, and, and that's probably cheaper it. than getting a ticket, right? Well, I tried yeah, it. Yeah, she, yeah. She, she yeah but, uh, but it's, um, you know, at all times, it's not going to be a spot there. But you're now, on the positive side, we are looking at building a parking structure. Um, it's going to be close to this area here. But still, it's going to require a block walking. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's, um, it's going to uh, alleviate some of the parking issues downtown. But, um, but I appreciate your feedback, but the, um, w we did think this thing through from a building owner's perspective, a tenant's perspective, a business owner's perspective, and a customer's point of view. And without customers, there's no one paying the bills in downtown. And now your restaurant might rely mostly on walk-in, but the other places, all, majority of them rely on people coming from outside, people coming from wherever, other neighborhoods in the city or outside the city, and if they can't park, they're going somewhere else. And that's not good for downtown. But we're going to continue to look at it, and we'll try to make it clearer for the tenant parking because that is a big concern. But on the employees is what, what my wife recommends to them is that as soon as it starts to slow down, you want, anyone wants to move their car, 8 o'clock, 8.30, two of them go out together. They go down to the, the lot by the Paramount or they come back here where there's long-term parking. They move their cars and then they're close by. Then at the end of the night, when they all get off, maybe one of them rides another one to the car. But you, it, it's like in any urban setting or even if you were in a mall. Um, uh, uh, one, of the, one of our waitresses works in, um, in a strip mall. They're not allowed to park in the front of the strip mall. They have to park in the back, and they have the same concerns about going out at night around the back of the strip mall where there's no lighting and no, and, and no people. So, uh, you know, but we'll continue to monitor it and look at it, and we appreciate you opening downtown, and we, we want to keep you. And, um, and you do good business, and you have good empanadas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have brought some, but yeah, I don't want to go there. I'll meet with you, if you don't mind, on Thursday huh? or Friday, and I could go over with you and show you some of the opportunities that you can find. Okay. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any members from the council? Old McCliner. Yeah, I just, um, we're past the uh, winter parking. Uh, what affects the parking lots and even from the overnight parking. And, and I'm hoping that the signage is going to be clear because when you read the different lots and you can park Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in this part of the lot, and then Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday in the other part of the lot, but you, but you can't park in the uh, part where they need it clear for snow clearing. Um, that there's a lot of regulations and there's a lot of different specifications on where you can and can't park and what times you can, even with an overnight parking permit, you have to be in the correct part of the lot, and that's gonna depend on what day you're parking. So uh, I just wanna make sure that our signage gets those messages out very clearly. Anyone else? 
I got a motion to close the public hearing. So move. Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Green. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> public hearing is now closed. Okay, remarks of Alderman, Alderman Massey. Two quick things. Maria, thank you very much for the show, although I understand someone else is taking credit for uh, bringing uh, Peter Noonan in, but uh, it was a wonderful show. Uh, everyone's talking about it, and thanks for the next setup that uh, you have coming in. And then something on a, a not a pleasant uh, topic. Chief, I want to thank you, your entire department. When you have to deal with, I don't know if anyone saw this, but I'll read just a little bit of it. This is what these guys and gals have to deal with on a daily basis, and it really comes down to bail reform. Uh, something's got to be done. I'm hoping the governor or legislators do something with it, but just one little incident. Uh, back on March 12th, uh, the desk sergeant got a call. Officers responded to the scene where they found an Asian man on the sidewalk bleeding profusely from si significant facial injuries. The police <clears throat> knew right away who the uh, person was. He was familiar to the police. He was arrested two days earlier and charged with the robbery. It was alleged that on March 7th, he threatened a store clerk at, at a store. I won't uh, list the store and uh, stole $200. He was arraigned and mandatorily released on his own recognizance. That was two or three days before he does this awful beating on this person. And it's, uh, it, it's, this is just one incident. And our guys and gals have to put up with this on a daily basis, unfortunately. And I think a lot of it comes down to the judge's hands are tied and it goes up to bail reform. So uh, anyone knows anyone uh, with any influence, hopefully they'll change it. And when they arrested this guy a week ahead of time, the police would not have had to deal with him in another incident and, and a poor gentleman got beat severely. <clears throat> Thank you. Alden Witt. Thank you. Uh, just one thing, I just wanted to uh, congratulate uh, Lieutenant Khalil on his retirement. Uh, he was very helpful to me in the beginning of my journey here, helping me uh, serve our people. So he was a good guy. Well, he still is. Uh, and I wish him all the best. Thank you. Alderman Green. Thank you very much. First off, happy, happy, happy spring to everyone. It was nice to pull in here tonight at, uh, you know, a little after 630, and it was sunny and uh, actually 60 degrees, according to my truck at least. Um, so it's nice to have that... Uh, the, the sun coming back around a little warm weather. Um, I did last week uh, attend a uh, school safety tour through the Middletown School District with uh, several other uh, emergency services and, and other uh, local leaders. Um, a, the schools are phenomenally safe. I think uh, it's probably one of the safest places you could be. But we did get a chance to see all of the wonderful programming that the Middletown schools offer, and I'm not going to go into it in ex extensive uh Ways, but man, I graduated in 2007 and uh, I want to go back now. Uh, and I think that that was pretty much the, the thought of everyone uh, who took the tour was that uh, the programming now is just so phenomenal that uh, we want to go back. Speaking of the schools, the uh, Middletown Fire Department volunteers will be facing against the Twin Towers Middle School staff in a basketball game. Um, this is to raise uh, donations for the Midi -mall, Midi Mall that they have at Twin Towers Middle School. Uh, that game will take place on the 30th of March. It's a Thursday night at 6 p.m. at Twin Towers Middle School. There is a sign-up. Um, I believe you can see it through Facebook uh, if you want to get some tickets in advance, uh, just because there is a limit at the door to uh, how many can attend. Uh, but we look forward to that. Um, and I was uh, generously asked to be a speaker last night at the Mayor's Youth Council. I just want to say it's a wonderful group of, of uh, young people and uh, their uh, administrative staff, and you know they're going to do great things. I hope that someday we'll see some of them on this council. Um, but please, if you can donate blood, donate blood for their drive this Wednesday. Thank you. Alderman Kleiner. Thank you. 
Um, uh, first, I want to thank uh, my compatriot, Alderman Green, for translating the recycling uh, circular that uh, we're going to send out, and he did a Spanish translation of it. I've already sent it to the county. They're happy to have it. So uh, next we need to have it translated into Chinese. Um, we're going to be working on that. Um, the incident that happened and the bail reform, there's a part of bail reform. I mean, bail is a system for getting out of jail. But they have certainly, the law had ended up tying the judge's hands where they absolutely need more discretion for violent crimes. But uh, the other component of that incident was the mental health services and mobile mental health. And he was taken to Garnet for mental health evaluation and, and released and released and released. We really don't have effective mental health services. so. That, uh, thank you, Alderman Massey, but that also needs to be part of that equation. Um, we did hold our delayed constituents meeting. We had canceled it because of the weather report. It was going to get the blizzard, and it was going to be at 2 o'clock and at 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock. And so it actually was sprinkling when we would have had our <clears throat> meeting. But we did, we did have it um, yesterday. Uh, we said it, it's been two months since we had one, so we wanted to have them. I want to thank everyone who turned out for that. Our next constituents meeting will be on April 10th. Uh, so we'll have time to try and uh, get a speaker and see what we can do. Uh, we'll announce that the next meeting. Um, the pride, uh, well, the uh, citywide cleanup uh, I just want to mention that it's it's uh, at Erie Way, and that is where the farmer's market is. That's where the pavilion is. So if people don't know where Union Street and Erie Way is, uh, that's, that's where we're going to be leaving from this year. Um, one other thing, the county is having a household hazardous waste drop-off day, and that's at the Orange County Transfer Station, number one, that's opposite Mid-Hudson Psych uh, in New Hampton, and that's, um, that's April 15th. So that's for the household. Uh, there's a day for businesses uh, April 14th, but for individuals and for household, and you can bring pharmaceuticals and drop them off there too, so uh, that's something to be aware of. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Alderman Ray. Um, not going to repeat everything Andrew had to say. I did also attend the facility store at the schools. Absolutely outstanding uh, as a mother of a child who's looking at colleges. She has to keep in mind that some of these colleges will be a step down in technology and stuff that they have available to them. It's unbelievable. So um, I agree. Absolutely fantastic. That secret gets out. Uh, good luck to the real estate market. It will be a bidding war. Um, I just have to agree with Alderman Massey this evening. Um, my work is in doing police reporting, and bail reform is an absolute nightmare um, in terms of things like domestic violence and things like that. And the recidivism as soon as they're released, is it's terrifying, and it's scary for the people who are at risk. So I agree. Uh, change must be made, and that's really all I have tonight. Have a good night. Alderman Johnson. Uh, bail reform, that could be quite a lengthy conversation bad idea apparently from the start but um congrats to the paramount it just gets better and better congrats to all whoever's in charge or takes responsibility for it uh chief uh, send my congrats to sam and congratulations to your fbi graduate this sounds like an exciting person to have in your staff to kind of give some thoughts on what he learned at the academy i appreciate that um in your possession i've given you a piece of paper because i am positive None of you realized that it was International Day of Forests today. So before, before warned and reminded, uh, this is a UN initiative. And I've given you a piece of paper. And if you visited the website, which I did, you would read a very small part that says, forests give us so much to our health. They purify the water, clean the air, capture carbon to fight climate change, provide food, life-saving medicines, and improve our well-being. Yet despite all these priceless ecological, economic, social, and health benefits, forests are endangered by fires, pests, droughts, 
and unprecedented deforestation. It's up to us to safeguard these precious natural resources. So my goal this evening is um, to get some applause, which I did, so that's good, um, to plant a seed, pun intended. I would really like to know what my fellow council persons or anybody who's hearing these words is thinking about trees. Um, thoughts to be continued. Thank you. Alderman John Francois. <clears throat> Nothing this evening. Alderman Tobin. I'd like to thank the city treasurer for the clean audit. That was greatly appreciated. And I do agree with the mayor. Olivia's does have great empanadas. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, new business. Good evening. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin authorizing an amendment to the senior transportation contract. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Rope. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois accepting a $75,000 in grant awards for the Middletown Police Department from the Division of Criminal Justice Services. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson accepting a free little library from the Menacing Valley Rotary Club. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ray, awarding the water storage tank painting and rehabilitation at Highland Avenue bid to Nuco Painting Corporation. Resolution sponsored by Ray, seconded by Alderman Jean Francois. Any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner adopting a revised investment policy for the city of Middletown. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, authorizing an agreement with Loomis as the plan administrator for the city-sponsored health insurance plan. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean-Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, authorizing 2022 year-end budget transfers and adjustments. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution sponsored by Aldrin Massey, authorizing street closures for the annual Ruthie Dino Marshall Run. Responsible Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Witt. Any discussion? Alderman Green. Alderman. Oh, Jerry, if you want to go yep. first. Okay. Thanks. No, anyway, I just wanted to say, um, you know, that we did uh, have discussion about this last year about, you know, tabling this and whatever. and. Uh, I do plan to vote for it this evening. Um, we did hear concerns from our constituents last night, and uh, you know we are going to be having a meeting with some of the organizers just to make sure everything goes as smooth as possible. And uh, you know I look forward to that and a successful year of the race. Thank you, Alderman Kleiner. Yeah, I'd, I'll just add to that. I did talk to Mr. Uh, Maselli, who's the director of the Y, and he's going to meet with us and. Uh, uh, Kelly Patterson and we just we're trying to keep it on a positive basis and do everything we can to make it uh, as neighborhood friendly as possible. Thank you. Anyone else? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, thank Johnson. you, Mr. President. In light of the uh, conversation that we had at the Legislative Committee earlier this evening, I would like to offer the following resolution from the floor. Whereas various complaints are being received by the city regarding short-term rentals in residential dwellings, and whereas the mayor is recommending a change to the zoning code to prohibit short-term rentals in all zoning districts in the city, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Middletown will hold a public hearing on this proposed change to the zoning code on April 18th, 2023, at as near to 7.30 p.m. as possible in the Common Council Chambers, 16 James Street, 2nd Floor, Middletown, New York. 
Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson. Do I have a second? Alderman Ray. And because you're doing the state of the city. Um, well, I, I changed, changed it in view of the deference yeah. to your okay. your speech. Right. No, I, I just want to make sure that you're We're actually a little bit ahead of the curve, Mayor. I yeah. know it's hard to believe, you got it. but it's true. <laughs> you just sit there. <laughs> I, I assume Mr. Massey drew the resolution to the one base. <clears throat> and you it had did. nothing to do with it, and, and the mayor should not either. Any discussion? It's coming from the floor, man. I can't let it go here. <laughs> All right. Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Okay. Audit. Now? Please. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrant for the payment. Motion for Alderman Massey. Do I have a second? Alderman Johnson. Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ray. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Move for adjournment. Oh, move.